In chapter 9, we have to do quite a few different things. So we're looking at this uh, question number 7, and I have all the notes up here. We're going to refer back to them when we need to. We definitely need to compute a z-score, so that's one of the things we have to do. All right, so let's uh, read the question and then go and uh, refer back to our notes when we need to. All right, so 40%, so a college survey report determined that 40% of college students are bored during class. So our regular P is 0.4, our Q is 1 minus P, so 1 minus that value. Uh, N, so here we have 25 students are being surveyed in the new survey. Uh, 19 of the 25 in this new survey uh, are bored during class and determine if there's evidence enough to support the researcher's claim. Uh, so a researcher thinks the percentage has increased and surveys 25 more students. So we're going to have a P hat now. And actually I'm going to do how many students are bored. So it was 19 students. Uh, so our P hat, which is the proportion in the sample is 19 divided by 25. So that gives us the proportion in the sample that is bored, and that's 76%. So right away, it went from 40% originally to 76%. That seems like a big jump. It seems like that's enough evidence to support the researcher's claim. Now, what did the researcher think? The researcher thinks this percentage has increased. So. That right there tells us, let's see, the alternative or the HA or H1 is the alternative hypothesis. It's what you're trying to prove or claim. So in this instance, we're trying to prove or claim. There's researchers trying to prove or claim. Uh, researcher thinks the percentage has increased. So that's what they're trying to prove or claim. So that's automatically the alternative. So that's H1. And it's a claim on the, the actual proportion of board students. So it's that P is greater than 0.4. So that's the alternative hypothesis. The null is the opposite, which is P is, uh, you could either just have P is equal to 0.4, uh, or you could write it as P is less than or equal to 0.4. And again, this is less than or equal to. Um, it takes too long to type less than or equal to in the math formatting stuff, but that's less than or equal to right there. Either one is correct, it's fine. The alternative hypothesis is what really counts here. All right, test statistic. So I'm gonna copy this, and that's what we need to compute. Uh, oh, we're gonna compute the value down there. Uh, now. Is this Z or T? We have to choose one. So it's if it's a proportion, it's Z. And if it's a mean, it's T. And somewhere up here, it should say that. Test statistic for proportions is Z, uh, a Z equals. Test statistic for means is a T score or a T equals. So it's either a Z or a T. For us, we have a proportion, so it's gonna be Z. never spell this word per or poor pro proportion Z because it's a proportion okay standard deviation that is up here as well somewhere it's gonna be an s equals it is not here all right it was on the notes from the previous one Let's see. So I know it's the square root, I think, of P times Q over N. Let's see. So looking above. The, nope, that's the error bound. There, no. Did 
distribution. Okay, so it's binomial, so it's right here, standard deviation right there. Okay. Okay, so s equals square root. Now, n is 25 times p times q, right there. Uh, you're not using p hat, it's a regular p. So uh, the original p, the q, and the n. You multiply them together, and that's our standard, that doesn't seem right. That's the one I was looking for. There we go. All right. Divided by n. Okay. There we go. Standard deviation. Okay. All right, left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed test. Okay, that comes from the alternative hypothesis. We're looking for a larger uh, p-value. Uh, I shouldn't say p-value because that means something different, but a larger proportion, a larger p than 0.4. So this is a right-tailed because we're looking for a larger. If we're looking for a smaller, it would be left-tailed. And if we're looking for not equal, uh, meaning larger and smaller, or larger or smaller, then it would be two-tailed tests. Two-tailed are annoying because you got to cut the alpha in half somewhere. I must have written that. Um, maybe it's not a different a different chapter, but you do need to be careful with that. With that. Okay. We got right tailed. All right, the value of the test statistic. Okay, so it's our z value, so we're going to use that right there. So we have p hat, that crazy one of 70 something, 76. So it's p hat minus regular p, which was 0.4. Uh, what was after that? divided by the square root of p times q over n, which is right there, that is the standard deviation. So I could shortcut it and just go divided by s. All right, so that's our z value. Uh, let's make sure we're getting this right. So it's number seven. So that is right. Okay. All right. P values next. Uh, it is important that you knew if it was left, right, or two tailed because you get something very different on here. Now we have a right tailed. So our P value, it's either, uh, it's going to be one minus, but it's either the norm S dist or the T dist, depending if you have a uh, Z or a T value. We have a z value. So I'm gonna go over here, copy and paste this right here. So ours is one minus norm s dist z value, comma, and ours are always gonna be cumulative. All right, so there's our p-value. So this is a really small number. Uh, so that is correct. On the answer key, it has more precision. And if you make it bigger, you can see the more precision. So that's really small. And remember on these, if your p-value is less than alpha, I'll write down alpha here. Alpha is 0 0.05, when your p-value is less than alpha, uh, you reject the null hypothesis. So reject the H0, the null hypothesis. 
because p-value is less than uh, or equal to alpha. Uh, it's rarely going to equal alpha. So but if it's less than or equal to alpha, you reject H0. So again, what was H0? H0 was that the actual proportion was 0.4, which what, uh, what it was believed to be originally. But remember, they did some research and found that uh, in a new sample, it was way higher. So the idea is because this is so much higher than the original, it's very likely the original is not correct or things are different now. And that's exactly what we got here. So now we get to write the conclusion. We rejected H0 basically means we're accepting the alternative. Uh, but we're not allowed to actually write that. Um, so the way we write that is like this. Uh, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is more than 40% of statistics students that are bored during class. So uh, you're basically saying there's 40% um, uh, that more than 40% of statistics students are bored during class. All right, I added a letter J on this question. So uh, we, what is going on? Uh oh. Okay. Uh, what is the number of board students that would be needed out of 25 for the conclusion to be reversed? So it's got to be less than the number we got because the number we got led us to a 76% in the sample. So it's got to be less than 19. How much less is the question? And the way I've set this up, I believe if I edit the value right here, uh, I can see the p-value. Uh -oh. I can see the p-value change. So I'm going to make the p-value bold so it's easier to see. So what I'm going to do is just lower this number a little bit. So if I go from 19 to 18, you're going to see the p-value increase by a little bit down there. So instead of 18, I'll go to 17. Now I want to increase this so that it's just greater uh, than 0 0.05. So it's equal to or greater than 0 0.05. So 16, we're getting pretty close, getting warmer. There. So now we have 2% or 0 0.02, 14. All right, we finally broke right there a little bit above. So if I got 14 out of 25 students, my P hat would be 56 or 56%, and that would not be sufficient to uh, overturn the claim. So if I had 14 students, my P value would be higher. So I'm going to copy the conclusion that I wrote because it's nicer than I'll come up with on the fly. So 14 students or less, 14 out of the 25 students gives a P value of what we just saw. 0 0.0512, which is greater than alpha, so we would fail to reject uh, the null hypothesis. So that would 14 would be the or less would be the number we'd need to accept or to fail to reject the null or the original hypothesis. So I'm going to put that number back to 19 so that all the calculations are normal and all these answers match.